mother and a grandmother and a female business owner and now a congresswoman. I want those same opportunities for our future generations and that's why I stand here today in support of this resolution. And with that, I want to introduce my friend and colleague from Illinois, Mary Miller. Chairman Banks for bringing us all together in support of this great piece of legislation. I will never be afraid to speak out in defense of our daughters, of whom I have five daughters, um, who need adults in leadership positions who are not afraid of being criticized by the radical leftists. The answer to the question, what is a woman, has been clear for the entire history of our civilization. It goes back to the book of Genesis. An attack on biology because they want to put themselves above God and they want to brainwash our daughters with their wokeism. That's why today we are unveiling the Women's Bill of Rights in order to legally define what it means to be a woman. One of the most disturbing trends during the first year of the Biden administration has been the effort by the White House and the Department of Health and Human Services to push this extreme left political concept known as gender ideology. This Women's Bill of Rights will codify our common understanding and the reality we all know of the words female, woman, and sex, and I'm proud to support it on behalf of my five daughters and all women. Thank you, and I'd like to uh, introduce my good friend, Claudia Tinney. Congress that men can get pregnant, have babies, and get abortions. 
and schools that think it's okay for biological males to participate in girls' sports. This is insanity. I never thought I would have to stand here as a member of Congress and introduce legislation defining what a woman is. But this is the reality of the Democratic Party and this administration that they want us to live in, even if it means reversing the advancements of women, putting them in harm's way, or completely erasing who they are. Years ago, I used to read a children's book to my daughter uh, called The Emperor's New Clothes. And it's a story about an emperor who was tricked by traveling merchants into believing they were making him beautiful new clothes when in fact, there was nothing there. He and others were too afraid to speak up, ask questions, or challenge the existence of the clothes even though they couldn't see them. They became fools. It was only when the emperor was in a parade, totally naked, that a young boy spoke up and asked the obvious question. Why does the emperor not have any clothes on? The truth was finally revealed. I feel like we are living in that story today. Someone needs to speak up and state the obvious and wake everyone up. That's what our resolution does. It defines what has been true for centuries and what is still true today that girls re refer to human females and a mother is a parent of the female sex. These definitions derive from important biological differences between men and women. That is why girls' bathrooms should be for girls, girls' locker rooms should be for girls, women's domestic violence shelters should be for women, and girls' sports should be for girls. It's time to bring common sense back to this country it's time to stop the madness, and it's time to stand for women. And now I'd like to introduce the leader of the Republican Study Committee and a champion for our values and common sense and a father of three daughters, uh, Jim Banks from Indiana. Thank you, Jim. Good morning. Thank you, Vicki Hartzler, and thank you to all of you for being here today. And especially thank you to Debbie Lesko, for leading the Republican Study Committee's Women's Bill of Rights, and to all of the Republican Study Committee members, men and women, who came together today to support women's federal legal protections. We've seen so much support, bipartisan support, so much outside of support from groups like Independent Women's Forum, Heritage Action, Family Policy Alliance, Concerned Women for America, so many other organizations who are represented and supportive of what we are doing here today. Title IX was established nearly 50 years ago because for the past 50 years, every American and both political parties have recognized a simple truth. Biological males and biological females possess unique and immutable differences. Those differences are what make men, men, and women, women. And we should celebrate those differences. We should celebrate women and we should celebrate men. But today's radical left seeks to deny these differences and erase women as a distinct category alongside the legal protections that Congress established for them. Just yesterday, a Democrat witness testified to one of our, before one of our Republican study committee members, Dan Bishop, that men can get pregnant, but denying reality is difficult and Americans are hard to fool. So the left has censored anyone who dissents from these views or beliefs. I know this because Twitter suspended me for pointing out obvious truth about biological sex. But the Republican Study Committee will continue to fight back on these issues. That's why RSC filed a discharge petition for my friend Greg Stubbe's bill to save women's sports, which right now, as we speak, has 183 signatures from all from House Republicans. And today I expect even more members of Congress to sign the discharge petition as we get closer to 218 signers to force Nancy Pelosi to put this bill on the floor of the House for a vote. 
Today we are united, though, around a women's bill of rights. We are committed to defending female athletes' right to compete on a level playing field. And we are committed to preserving women's right to privacy and safety in single-sex spaces, in domestic violence, shelters, bathrooms, and federal prisons. I am proud that Republican Study Committee is standing by my three daughters so that they too can enjoy the same rights that all American women have had for the past 50 years. So thank you again. I want to yield to a true champion, as uh, someone who works so hard for these issues, Heather Higgins with the Independent Women's Forum. prohibits unjust and arbitrary sex discrimination and requires equal opportunity for members of both sexes. But these laws will cease to mean anything if we cannot define basic words such as sex, woman, female, and male. We know what a woman is, what a mother is, what a female is. We know that without needing to be biologists. We know there is a difference between sex and gender. Our laws and our politicians should know that as too as well. That's why Independent Women's Voice created the Women's Bill of Rights to stop the erasure of women from our laws. Our Independent Women's Law Center brought together leading experts from the right as well as from the principled left to create this common sense and scientifically based declaration on the biology of sex. The Women's Bill of Rights does not create new rights or entitlements. It simply codifies basic terms and current court rulings regarding single-sex programs, facilities, and safe environments. In short, it recognizes that equal does not mean identical, and that men and women can be simultaneously legally equal and yet not the same. The Women's Bill of Rights ensures that when it comes to sex discrimination, Americans and our laws are at least speaking the same language. We are so grateful to Chairman Jim Banks, Representatives Debbie Lesko, Mary Miller, Diane Harshberger, Vicki Hartzell, Barry Moore, and Claudia Tenney for introducing this important idea as a congressional resolution. We are proud to stand with principal feminists, including Women's Liberation Front and the U.S. chapter of Women's Declaration International, as well as Concerned Women for America to support the resolution. We invite every single American to sign on in support of the Women's Bill of Rights at our website, womensbillofrights.com, and we invite candidates to do so as well. Standing for women, for equal opportunity, and for science, should be a bipartisan issue. Why isn't it? That's a question that every policymaker and every candidate for office should be asked. Anyone who cannot define the word woman by definition is unable to support or stand up for the legal rights of women. We are proud to stand for women's rights and we encourage everyone, no matter their political affiliation, to join us. And now I want to introduce Janae Strachey of Heritage Action. Hello. I first thank everyone for coming and um, to say that as the Director of Grassroots for Heritage Action, I'm here representing 2 million grassroots activists all across this country, including 20,000 Sentinels that care about the rights of women. I want to thank uh, Congresswoman Lesko, Miller, Harshbarger, Tenney, and Hartzler all for being here and for leading the charge in this important resolution. They've all shared important remarks today and talked about the common sense of this bill and uh, the ridiculousness that we're even having to define it. But the truth is, it is common sense. we simply cannot stand by any longer. Women have made great strides over the last several decades, and now we have equal opportunity and protections in education, 
in the workplace and in our daily lives. But now these opportunities and protections are under attack from the left as they seek to eliminate the two sexes entirely. They are displacing women without any care or concern for us, destroying the clear line between male and female, and thus rolling back protections for women has had real consequences. We've already seen women's opportunities taken away on sports teams. As someone who has competed um, competitively in six different sports since third grade, I personally know the life skills and opportunities that I learned and given from uh, participating in sports. We've seen sexual violence take place in communities and in correctional facilities, but that is just the start. The impact this will have on women in the workforce, in higher education and beyond, uh, I'm sure is, is far beyond the imagination of many, and it will have a lasting ripple effect on our society and country at large. Across the country, women and girls and parents are rightly concerned. We do not want our rights eroded by a party of woke activists hell-bent on destroying the two sexes in the traditional family unit. The left falsely claims to be the party of women. We know that's not true. If it were true, they would be standing up for the millions of women who are going to have a harder time succeeding without Title IX protection. Protesters and so-called activists on the left always try to falsely attack conservatives by saying that they think our daughters are going to have fewer rights, or fewer rights than they have. Well, the left needs to take a look in the mirror because if they destroy Title IX and effectively eliminate women in society, their daughters will truly have fewer and maybe no rights. It is so unfortunate that so many Democrats in Congress will not get on board with this resolution and will continue to attack women for their own political gain. But thank you again to all the members here today supporting this important resolution and the other conservative organizations. We appreciate all the support and all the conservatives and the Republican Study Committee and so many others who are truly fighting for the equal opportunity and protection. The American people are with you. Thank you.